Okay, here we are. Hi. And I can hear you and you can hear me. And we can hear each other. How are you? Did yeah. we along with us? Uh, pardon me? We do. We, we have some people. Oh, there okay. were people in the waiting room. And uh, we will, uh, I've opened up the, the comments so uh, people can uh, ask questions. Uh, and uh, they're going to ask you all kinds of crazy stuff, I'm sure. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Cannot but, wait. I, have, um, I have CNN on as you Yes. Oh, you have CNN on right now? Is anything interesting happening? Not that. You know, we haven't talked about ad infinitum. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ad infinitum. <laughs> so, uh, well, since you since you brought up uh, having the news on, um, I was going to talk about this later. But uh, why don't we start off with um, what uh, what is it that you uh, when do you think we're going to start opening up again, and what do you think that's going to look like? Uh, uh. I was only a mind reader. Um, what I've heard is um, late summer, early fall, um, as long as everything is going in the right direction. But I don't know whoever's watching this realizes it's not going in the right direction. So I'm not sure. You know, some things are coming back. Tyler Perry's studio. In, um, it's not going in the right direction, so uh, I'm not. Sure. Anna is up and running. There's some soap operas that are running, but I think it's it's just a, you know, we have to do this safely. You know, if Mark Harmon doesn't want to go back to work, he doesn't want to endanger him and his family. He's not going back to work. So right. I think it's going to be a layered, um, a layered opening. Not like oh, we're reopened. Um, I think some will start. In the fall, and maybe some will start after the beginning of the year, and then maybe in, in I've heard March, next March. But you know, there is a little, a little, little, little bit going on, but they don't know the start dates. Like things right. that they're starting now, they just don't know when it's going to begin. So, well, I've told you that I, I want you to submit me for all of those shows about the astronaut dealing with loneliness being the only person yeah. on the space station. That's going to be you. That that show I would be happy to do right now. Yeah, it's been a it's been a journey. I, I well, I know people of our generation. We haven't we didn't live through World War, World War II or anything really life threatening. Right. I'm in my life that I really feel scared. I have a, a, a fear, and um, you know. That on top of the, everything else, which I won't go into because no one wants to hear my jargon. Um, it's, it's just a very tough time. So I'm glad I get to be here today and stay out of that and stay in the good. And I'd love to answer any questions you all have. I've been doing this for 30 years. Holy Moses. Um, well, I, I have some questions. What, because, because, you know, people ask me this all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm uh, unfortunately the wrong person to ask because having grown up in the industry, I, uh, w when I when I quit practicing law to start being an actor again, I had been an actor as a kid. Right. And, and I worked and casting directors knew me and, right. uh, and I had a resume and then I went to law school. And then when I quit, I, you know, I had a network of people already. Yeah. Um, so, so, so I never had to deal with the, how do you get an agent question? True. Um, which was, uh, you know, I was incredibly fortunate. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then also, even if I had, that was back, th that was 30 years ago. Right. Uh, I have no idea how somebody now getting out of, uh, out of college or out of grad school, um, or getting off the bus here in LA, mm -hmm. how or quitting their other job at thirty? How how do you like to be approached? Well, and I, um, I don't mean you right now. Like how no, how should somebody try and get you? Um, I still look at um, 
pictures and resumes that I used to be mail, but now it's uh, you know email. I look at everything. Uh, it, for me, it's almost as if you're going. I might have to plug myself in. I'm losing my battery. Uh, it's like going to coffee. I hope you're talking about your phone right now. This is not, <laughs> this is just not acceptable at five in the afternoon. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my, I have to. I'm gonna go turn plug the phone in here. Um, I like emails. I like recommendations. Like when Matthew meets someone that he really likes, or perhaps someone that he's known in class. Look, I just want to make sure you could see me. Can you see me? Yep. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm at the office. Or um, I do a lot of shit. Not a lot. I mean, not a lot right now. But I'm sorry. This is a little hard. I do showcasing. Um, and um, I get referrals. Well, let me see if I can get this better. I get referrals from casting directors and producers and writers. Um, so it varies. There's not one way you get a client. There's a million ways you get a client. Um, right. right. Some of my most successful clients are the people that I just opened an email or I was doing a search. You know, right now, and we could keep talk about this further. It's a ethnically very, I, I feel personally that Hollywood um, changed, did a double take about five years ago. Right. So the market is flooded with wonderful content uh, for all ethnicities now, um, Hispanic, Asian, African-American, multi-talented, uh, multi-cultural on, um, Netflix, I just finished shit still not I say it incorrectly. And that's it. That's an Israeli cast. And it's Schweizel. Schweizel. Him, him too. Um and so if everything is any anything's possible and everything's possible now. You know, it used to be if you weren't blonde hair and blue eyed and looked like uh, a little Barbie doll or a Ken doll, you didn't have a career. Um, you know, your dad didn't have the, the classic Hollywood, you know, handsome looks. He's a character actor. But now he doesn't have to just play. Well, now he's older. But um, what what we perceive as a leading man, James Gandolfini, who was one of my clients, was one of the biggest leading men of, of the 90s on um, cable television. And he personified what like a truck driver looked like. But that's right. that's what became the leading man in, in in our in our genre. And even the female uh, leads now, they don't. You don't have to be a size two. You could be a size twenty two, uh, or any size you want. I don't want to be specific to size or look like anything. Some of the biggest shows and most successful shows now are shows that are not what we're used to, um, and I find that so amazing. I have a client on a series called Work in Progress on Showtime. And it's a, she's a woman, a lesbian woman. Um, and it's about the workplace. And it is so brilliantly funny. Five years ago, they never would have produced a show like that. So the times are changing. And right. when I see, you know, People saying we don't have the opportunities. Well, in Hollywood, the opportunities are there. Matthew knows a lot of times they'll say, oh, you're the wrong color. <laughs> you're the wrong color today. You have to be, you know, he'll go into an audition. He said, well, there was an African-American, there was a Hispanic, and there was me. Um, and it's actually easier when they just want one ethnicity because when you when they say 40 to 50 all ethnicities, that means it could go to anybody. If they specifically write it for an Indian man, then it, it cuts the um, talent pool by 80%. Wonderful. Right. So the more versatility you have, that's great. The more skills you have are important. Am I looking only for people with huge resumes? No. It is important sometimes. Um, I took on someone, a 40-year-old Indian man, so talented uh, I just took on a Hispanic gentleman with, he's done five series, but you know what? Even if he hadn't done the five series, I would have taken him anyway. He speaks Spanish. He's fantastic. 
Um, he's always working his craft. That to me is, is such a turn on as an agent um, because so many of my friends, I have so many actor friends, they don't study anymore. I said, well, how could you not study? So you audition two or three times a month for 10 minutes. And my clients who study the most get the furthest. Very important. Very, very important. Well, I guess I better go back to school then. Yeah, you better go back. You're the okay. teacher. Oh, that's right. Those who cannot do. That's right. Um, right. Uh, you know, I noticed something when I, when I started working with you. You know, I always had two headshots. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, back in the day, you you printed those out. Yes. Uh, and and it cost you a million dollars every few months. And and, and, and you right. had messengers. And now I notice like you you call me up every up every couple of months and say, I need this look. I need that, you know, so you want like ten different headshots with me looking like a truck driver, not well, with me you know with what? a couple of days growth. And actually each actor it's a little different Matthew because you're a character actor so you can play the doctor you could play the judge you could play the drug addict you could play all of these amazing things and if we're going to limit you to just the Jewish funny guy which you don't even get those roles I, um, I never get I never get those never roles never get those roles um, I get you know what I always tell people is I get that there's something about my face they, they look at me and they say, oh, that's the guy who gives you bad news. Right, right. Because so I've told I, so many people, we did everything we could. Well, also remember now, I'm using um, actors' assets. Actors' acts. I don't even know what it is anymore. It's been such a long right. time. And so if there's a role, and, you know, you've, re you've read for so many different types of roles. Staunch Republicans, Democrats, uh, all different things. I have the luxury of look, you know, pulling your submission up and saying, how, can Matthew do this? And what would he look like doing it? So right. I'm not going to submit your suit and tie for a role where they want a low income or they low, want a blue collar guy. And you, you have booked the blue collar guy. Um, yeah. It's fun as the character actor. Now, there are certain actors I represent they don't need more than two pictures. They kind of, that's right. their thing. Right. They have the tie and then they have the not tie, but you know, it depends. Each person is, is different. Um, women. And those pictures I've noticed, you know, th that those pictures that you want of me don't have to be things that I went out and, and hired a headshot photographer no, for. No, I've had somebody no, snap no. a picture of me in a leather coat and yes. you've said, Hey, that's great. That's what I need for this submission. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, this fellow, uh, who happens to be somebody I know, Mark, uh, Hi, Mark. He, has, he has a question. He wants yes. to know what are the other skills, other than being able to act, of course, that are most helpful to have and develop? Languages. Um, oh, God. Sword fighting. Anything that you do. See, I'm a perfectly untalented person. So my resume would be acting and acting. Um, if you're a paramedic, if you're a doctor, um, I have clients of mine who are real nurses and that helps. Um, uh, what kind of skill set do you have, have in terms of, uh, uh, did you play, can you play football? They're going to hire someone to play, who plays football to play football. If it's a football movie, they're not going to send you to camp for 12 weeks to learn how to throw a ball. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think. So, what are the, I like what to is, think one of the one of the, the skills are, you know, people skills. Oh, you no. know, being, being, being on time. <laughs> oh, the, oh, those skills. Oh, that's a different story. I mean, that's, you know, I... I'm the type of person who shows up 10 minutes early to everything, even in L.A. I don't know how I do it. I must be missing out on a lot in life because I'm early to everything. I, I don't want to hear that you're running late. Um, there are not that many auditions. There are not that many great auditions. Um, Matthew does not. Matthew actually shows up a day early. Remember? He, many times. Jackie, I went a day early. Twice. I'm happy to see him. 
Um, <laughs> really be the best professional you could be. Um, that is so important. Um, I don't have time for stories. One reason why Matthew was such an incredible client. I'm there. I'll be there. There's no like whole story behind one audition. Every once in a while, you know, if he's, of course, if he's going out of town, he'll book a job, but make the process as easy as possible for your agent or whoever's representing you, your manager, because so much good. I always thought it would be so wonderful that every actor has to sit in an agent's office for a day and shadow them to see what goes on in a day here, because I'm like a specialist at everything, but I really master nothing very well because we negotiate contracts. I make sure that if someone gets paid, they get paid properly. I make sure that they have all their resources. I make sure if they're having a bad day and they call me and they say, Jack, this isn't my day. We either talk you off the rope or we talk, you know, it happens. So agents, Actually, I feel we get a very bad reputation because um, when you think of an agent, you think of a, um, a narcissistic, egocentric uh, buffoon. And we're not. Most of my friends who've done this for years, um, you have to have a lot of integrity because this is a very small little town we're in. So you have to be careful. Oh, um, even when I meet, like when I take a meeting with a client and they've been with a few other agents, I, it's interesting to hear what they're going to say. I prefer them say it just didn't work out because I don't want my name being bashed in another office. And we all right. know each other. After 30 years, it's you know very, very rare that I, if someone says, oh, I'm with this agency. Oh, I've never heard of that. Um, so there, it's, there's probably about 300 of us that represent talent well. And I always say, being an actor, yes, you're an artist. Yes, I get that. But you're very much a business person too. Very, very much. And I think that's not, um, people do not take that into heart when they're getting into this. And decisions right. are made, good decisions, bad decisions. I just had a client leave me during the pandemic. And when I found out about it, you know what I said? Anybody who wants to leave now I have no interest in representing. Right. It's not going to happen. I, I, <laughs> even if it was my biggest client who doesn't want to leave, um, I wouldn't be interested. You know, life comes first still. Right. So this fellow, uh, Jason, who happens to be a student of mine, he has a question. If you have a reel that hasn't been updated in some time, mm -hmm. would it be worth sending out, whether to an agent or for an audition request, requesting a reel? Yes. Yes. I, as I, long I, as you have headshots of what you look like now. Well, listen, if you were doing Marcus, if it was you doing an episode of Marcus Welby, I think it would kind of be obsolete. Well, you have to kind of keep it within five years. And sometimes I have um, my clients who don't have great reels. They put themselves on tape. Or now, listen, doing a, a short film now, everyone can produce their own short film. So I think a reel is something to consider, even if it's a minute. Um, keep it short, sweet, to the point. I don't necessarily feel that reels are... I think it could hurt you and it could help you. So if you have that on your reel, make it your best work possible, whether if it was five right. years ago or you, Matthew, you have stuff from a while back. Don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have some, uh, I have something uh, from 1975 an episode of Kojak <laughs> or 15 years old. Uh, I have the first movie I did where I was eight, Yeah, but you don't send that out very much. Um, uh, Sid asks, um, what should you look for in an agent as an actor? First and foremost, you know, what I find in this town is that people, not pe actors, they don't do their homework on the agents. 
So I'll meet someone and say, oh, what agent were you with? And I have never heard of this agency before. And I said, well, how's it going? Well, it's not going because that agent really has never probably maybe opened its doors three months ago. Um, I call those little pop-up agencies. Um, do your research on the person. Go on IMDb. Look to see who they represented. Um, go on YouTube. See if there's any content on them. I have a couple of uh, nice YouTube interviews I've done in international classes. And I've got to tell you, it's very much helped me sign people. And I'm not a social media person at all. I would much prefer not to to just remain silent. Uh, the most important thing is, do you like the person? Do you know mm -hmm. how many friends of mine have agents? They say, I can't stand that person, but he's getting me work. I'm like, really? That's I have to kind of like the my my clients it's got to be simpatico and a lot of them you know i i don't want to say a lot a good number of them are are in my inner circle and some of them are just people i represent it doesn't mean i like them or dislike them it means that it just means what it means um it, very basic you know i represent young people too and i always tell the parents when you come in the room to meet me you know use your common sense Use your common sense. Just because that agent has a great reputation, if you thought they were just god-awful, don't go with them. Even right. if it's their only opportunity at the time. And I know many people are naive and they think, oh, no, this he'll, he'll be fine. Or if you've heard this one agent doesn't pay their clients on time, that's not something you want to be doing. You just really no. want to. There is enough information out there about all of us that you guys should be able to make sound decisions. And you know, there, like I said, when I say 300 of me, there's not 300 of me. There's the CAA and the William Morris and the ICM and the Paradigm. Those are for the top, 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 top people. I don't, I, I don't know anyone in this room. I can't see you, but I don't think any of us belong in those rooms because the problem with those agents is the, the phone only rings in so if you need if if you are a nicely credited actor or a mildly credited actor you need someone getting on the phone and say well what about matthew what about tim what about blah 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 um, right so in terms of there's probably like four levels i'm considered a boutique agency what that means is that i represent a little bit of everything in a small capacity i represent series regulars i represent co-stars, guest stars, a couple of celebrities, few and far between, because that's really not my business. Um, I leave that for the CAAs, um, commercials. Uh, so I really say, let the agent, and I, one thing I will not do, I will never ask someone to sign a contract. First of all, I don't believe in signing contracts, but that's just a personal thing with the agent and the client. It's a, it's a, um, uh, it's a binding a verbal agreement is a binding agreement in the state of California. Um, I never make anyone make a decision in the room. I'll say, oh, I hope you pick me, but go home. If there's someone better, if you think there's someone better out there, please don't let me stand in your way. Nine out of times they, times they end up coming back saying, you know what? I made a mistake. And I'm like, okay, I, I understand. Sometimes I pick wrong. Sometimes they pick wrong. Um, so I've had clients I've had for 30 years. I've had clients I've had for five years, two years. Uh, there's no agent in this town who has client removal immunity. Nobody, nobody, right. nobody, nobody. Even the top, top agents lose clients. And that's the nature of what we do. Doesn't so this is, quick, this is a quick, quick question. Yeah. Um, are hard copies of headshots still used? Do you yes. do you need to have them on hand to always bring to? A, always have a picture and resume on hand. Yeah. Uh, what I found personally is I don't get them printed because they're color now. I don't get I don't spend the money to go get them printed because I just don't go through them that right. much. You know, yeah. to go get print a hundred of them. I just print one out on my on my printer and bring it with me. And then if I yes. Yes. And that one in, I print out another one. Um, so that that's that's yeah, an I easy one. Now. They don't. Require, 
Right. I know for casting, they don't always request a uh, Rarely. headshot. But yeah. I still know, for example, like if you have a client, I have a client testing for a series, the network, the network, yeah. the network will say, oh, can you send us 10 headshots? I don't care. Right. keep headshots anymore. I call the client and yeah. say, you have to get 10 headshots over there. I used to right. have a headshot room, believe it or not. Yeah. No, I remember those days. I remember yeah. having to get, a, you know, yeah, spend so much money on that. Uh -huh. um, how long, uh, if somebody's not happy with their agent, how long do you think they, uh, they should stick around if they're not? Uh, well, th this person, uh, Sarah's asking about if you're not booking work through them. I think the question is, are you really, are you getting appointments? You know, because the agent can't, the agent can't get you work. They can get you in no, the room. No, no, no. This is what I say. And I even tell clients this too, because unfortunately I'm, uh, I, I work with um, complete disclosure. If you've been with me for a year, and I can't get you auditions. I would never hold you to the, um, why would you want to stay with me? You know, I go into each relationship hoping for the best, praying for the best. And sometimes it's like, oh, okay. I really thought that person, I had a client, huge resume, could not get this actor arrested. He left and that's okay. I wasn't upset because I said, you know what? I, in turn, I didn't give you the opportunities. What did we, what did I expect? Um, you don't want to go, it, it, this is what I would do. I would have a connection. You know, a lot of agents don't believe in returning emails or phone calls. Um, if, if they're not open to a communication with you, that's a problem. Um, I would, you know, sometimes you, a lot of agents, a lot of clients have managers so a lot of times the relationship um, can be, uh, I would say managers, not only do they help me, but they manage me too. They help guide me through the process also. And I learn a lot from managers. I've worked with about 30 managers and they bring me clients. They keep my company alive. Um, they pick. Uh, but what I've noticed through the past couple of years is that um People understand more the industry and it doesn't mean because you haven't worked in two years that you're not getting a job. Um, right. Who just booked a big, one of my clients, he was with me for five years. He was booked a series the series got canceled. And then he went another five years. He wasn't with me anymore. And that was okay. And I think he's on the show, the rookie um, because we were at a standstill. He wasn't really booking that much. And I don't, I, uh -huh. I understood and some people leave the business. Some people realize, you know, the rejection rate is just way too much, too high. And then I have sometimes that I have a client that just isn't doing the work. And they're blame, like they're auditioning, 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 and they're not getting callbacks. And then they decide, oh, I'm going to leave Jackie and go somewhere else. But now I'm going to really put my mind and my heart and my soul into it. That's not fair. <laughs> Right. That is not fair. So, you know, the road, I start each and every road with the same intention is that I want a successful client. It's about dollars and cents. Um, but how that happens has, I could tell a thousand different stories about a thousand different clients. Right. Do you go to the theater? Uh, Sandra wants to know if you go to the theater to uh, look for talent. Yes and no. The problem with going to the theater just to look for talent is that in LA, it is so time, well, not anymore, because if you've been in, on the road in the past three months, it's been a pleasure to drive in Los Angeles. Um, to spend a Friday night or a Saturday night or a Sunday going to see one person perform is very time, I'm trying to use right. the right word. Um, that's why I like going it, it, to showcases. What showcases right. give me... It's not an efficient use of your time. It's yeah. not an efficient use of your time to go so see one play. If I go to a showcase and I see 25 people and I sign one or two, that was a really good use of my time. Right. But I have met, few and far between, I have met people 
a theater. Um, I've been to a lot, a lot of theater. Um, it's very hard to get agents to go to theater in this day and age. Uh, because of that, it's just, a, it's, it's time consuming. What about in terms of uh, clients keeping in touch? A uh, couple of people are asking questions uh, around this topic about uh, how do you like clients to keep in touch with you? No, and don't Mark call also- me, don't write. I don't want to. And no, um, this is what I like to do. And this is what I've been doing. I don't know, Matthew, have you been getting my updates on, on the CMA? Yes, I have. Okay. I have. never respond. <laughs> it's because we talk every few I days. We talk every day. Um, I, I don't respond to that, that. Those are the mass emails to all the clients. Right. And well, then you is- send me a text saying, how are you doing? Are you on the leg? <laughs> and that one I respond to. What I've done during the pandemic, um, because I didn't know how to quite actually, listen, I don't have any, uh, I'm not a leader. I'm just another person walking through this, but I have 200 people on my list and it's very hard to keep in touch with 200 people so what i've been doing is every couple weeks just sending a little what i've been doing blah 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 blah. and i'd say 40 percent of the people respond i don't take it personally if someone doesn't um in real time that's you know all these are such everyone is different right Um, if i haven't you know out of sight out of mind just remember that Right. So if I never hear from you, there's there's a fine line of what's too much and what's not enough. Um, if you're auditioning all the time, we're in communication. We're emailing, blah, 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 blah. So that's taken out of the, that's number one. Number two, if you're just starting out, I always say, if you have something to tell me that's noteworthy, send me a brief email because I don't have the patience to sit through a two-page email after the third line, I'm like, oh, good Lord. I have to, re- I have to read this now? Right. Um, hey, I just met a casting director. I met April Webster. And she said, oh, tell Jackie I said hi. Hey, that's something we need to do. Um, if you've been with an agent for a year and you've heard nothing and they don't respond to anything, you have a problem. You do have yeah. a problem. Um, one of the one of the pieces of advice I, I give people also is that you know you if if you you should know people who are who are like you in, in your category you should have a sense of what's going on if nothing's going on right. if all of my friends the other middle aged Jewish guys are saying <laughs> Jesus there's nothing going on then I shouldn't be calling you and saying hey what's going on because I know nothing's going on. If everybody else is in my category and my age is going out all the time and I'm not, that gives me information. Yes, it does. And that's very, 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 very true. And, you know, a lot of the times I know a lot of actors see the breakdowns. I'm not immune to that. And they'll say, well, why didn't I go in for this one? Blah, 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 blah. You have no idea on my end. A lot of the times, like Matthew has booked roles where the breakdown comes out. They say, is Matthew available? He doesn't even have to audition for it and he gets the role. Or I say, hey, what about Matthew? Oh, no, we already have our choice five minutes after the breakdown comes out. Right. So just because you see a breakdown and you think you're right for it really is um, not necessarily true. Because so much more goes into it. Even as the agent, it's so frustrating. You, Oh, no, we booked that role's an offer only. That's offer only. I work within a, um, it's probably about 50 of us in a small uh, Facebook community of agents and managers only. We share information and it's wonderful because I know if it's an offer only, I don't have to call and pitch. If they're going to go all ethnicities, I know I could pitch X, Y, and Z. It's really helped me. The more information I have as an agent gathering from other agents and managers has been wonderful. Like, don't bother calling her. She's not responding to emails. Like, oh, okay. Right. Let's not let's not um spend twenty minutes on that nonsense. Right. So, I hope uh, I'm answering these questions. I tend to be going into you are. Uh, no, this is great information. Uh, Mark wants to know how uh, how can I best help my agent get me into the audition room? So, what what can once once you've taken us on, mm-hmm. other than sitting at home? pining and waiting for you to call. What should we be doing to help okay. you do your job for us? Be 
always be the best actor you're going to be. And what does that mean? Study, 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 constantly study, constantly be in practice. Um, have all your resources and your materials for me. If I've asked you five times to get me new pictures and a year has passed and you have the audacity to say to me, why aren't I getting auditions? I may ring your, um, <laughs> uh, be current, be available. Uh, you know, I remember when the pandemic started, I thought, just think of this as like an extended Christmas vacation because actors like between November and January 1st, just go out of town for six, six weeks. Um, make yourself available. I always say this is very important. This is such a common sense business. Do what you think is common sense, okay? So I'm an agent, I own my own company. I have been at this crappy office almost. I'm a volunteer at my own company right now because I'm not getting paid to do the work. But guess what? To keep this alive, Bills need to be paid. Actors need to be paid. Things need to be taken care of. Okay. If I was an agent who said, you know what? I'll come back after the pandemic. I don't care. I would not have a business to come to. That's what you have to do as an actor. Just right. because there's a pandemic or things are not happening, it does not give you a, a license to not be the best self you could be. This has been a terribly hard time. What's gotten me through this for me is knowing every day I get up, do my hair, make my bed, get in my car, I do my thing. And I think that it's so easy, especially as an artist, to get lost in this. Because living in L.A., it's not like it was 25 years ago. Four guys would live in an apartment together. You each paid $200. You had a little part-time job. Now you need a full-time job and to be in that, like Matthew. Like you have other things. Um, I hope I'm not saying anything I'm not supposed to. Um, no, but he's I... a teacher. Everybody knows he's a teacher. Um, just be available. Be there. Um, be present. I mean, I, I kind of sound like a cliche, but it's you'd be surprised how many times I tell the same story and still people aren't listening. No, it, it's I find with, with my students um, so often – they ask all these questions about, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? But they're not doing what they need to do to be the best actor they can be. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have conversations all the time about, you know, uh, going in. It, it says that, that, I that I pour her a cup of coffee, but I'm in the audition. There's a reader there. There's no cup. There's no, I said, they don't care about the cup of coffee. They want to see your acting. They don't care right. about my, don't mime. You don't need to mime, poor, you know, but it says in the script I said, and I keep telling them, be the best actor you can be. You walk into the room, you're present, you, you are somebody they want to work with. Mm -hmm. You let them know that you're there to solve their problem. You're not looking for them to solve your problem. Right. <laughs> you know, that's a big, that's a big thing is, is it, this is, there's so much energetic about this business that when you walk into an audition room with a, with a feeling of desperation, I, I've oh, been no, on no, the no, other side of those, I've been on the other side of those tables. And no, when somebody walks into the room and their attitude is, here's how I can solve your problem. If this is what you want, this is how I'll solve your this problem. This is how I'm going to do it. Right. And, and I always try to walk into the room. I'm, I may not have had an audition for weeks and I don't have another one coming up, but I walk into that room like I have somewhere else I have to be as soon as I'm done here. Mm -hmm. You have all my attention right now. And then I got another audition to get to. Um, exactly. um, I, how many people do we have on now? Because I want to. We have 20 people listening. Okay. Can you see how many of you watch TV? Um. I can I I'm wondering if I can ask a uh, I can't do a, a a poll. There's some some ways sometimes where okay, you can I'll do. Just, a I'll poll. tell you guys a great story. Right before, I think in February, I sat on I don't know if I sat on a panel or no, it was in person, and there were about seventy actors in the room for from all over the world, and I asked that question to people. I said, "Oh no 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 no, sorry," I said, "You." are not really actors then because I am. So I watch TV 
I look to see what's on. If I have people auditioning, even if I don't like the show, I'll watch it because I want to see the pacing. I want to see the timing. Grey's Anatomy is much different than This Is Us, which is much different than NCIS, which is much different than, um, oh God, I don't even know, uh, uh, Schitt's Creek. You got to do your work, guys. Very important. Yeah. Even if it's one episode of everything, because you want to be the most educated person in that room when you're going into a casting director. Oh, I saw that. Oh, that's the guy who was in so-and-so who was in so-and-so. Okay. Yeah. That, those days are over. And there's so much amazing TV to watch now. I mean, movies I can understand because so many of them are, you know, driven for 13 year old boys. Um, the superhero stuff. I don't watch that, but I really do. I feel TV is in its highest form now. And it's now with what we're going through, there's going to be more and more content. Everybody has streaming and this, and I even watch old shows to go, Oh, I see why this person got that role because they've done four other shows for that producer. So the history of television, you could actually pay, if you pay attention to it and see the people on the shows and the guest stars and the co-stars um, and how they ended up as a series regular on that show. Um, it's very, very interesting. So please pay attention to that. Very right. And particularly if it's a show you haven't watched, but you're going in on it. Yes. I mean, obviously. Get on, you, get on YouTube and watch some clips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I remember when people were talking about Shit's Creek, I said, who would want to watch such a stupid name of a show? I watched the show three times in the past. Literally, it makes me so happy because it's so fun to watch. Um, so it's just, TV is a great medium. And you want to be paying attention, not just as yourself as an actor, but here you're watching great, not always great, but I always find it interesting. I think to myself, why did that person get the role? And sometimes I also think, I know why my client didn't get that role because the acting so bad on the show, my client would pale, they pale in comparison. So you right. learn a lot about, and even if you get a, if you don't get a role and you see who they've cast, usually you could figure out why you didn't get the role. Oh, that person, Matthew, there was some show you auditioned for and they pinned you and it was about the rabbi. You did such a great self tape. And when New I saw Amsterdam. who they booked, he was a little bit older. And I said, okay, that makes sense. I got it. There's usually a reason. And it's not, not always about the acting either. It's just that it's so often people. not about the actor. Oh, yeah. you know, it, they, you know, uh, I, I tell my students all the time that you, you can lose the role the moment you walk into the room, no matter Absolutely. how good you are. Do you know how many because times? The, yeah. You're just um, not the you're just not the guy. No, no, and you don't. And then when you are the guy, you know, I represented Chrissy Max from This Is Us. She was my assistant for five years, and she was. I met her. She was my um, client, and she sat for twelve years. She booked a few, few, few things, and then she auditioned for This Is Us. But guess what? She didn't get the role. They made her rescreen test because Dan. Fogelman, who's the creator, the show, that role was written about his sister, but he wasn't uh -huh. quite sure that Chrissy was going to be the sister, that she embodied exactly what it was. So they made her rescreen test for huh. her. And need, needless to say, I mean, she's was sung, sang at the Grammys, at the Academy Awards, I apologize. Uh, she was up for an Emmy. Um, She's someone who showed up every single day and did not give up. Bless mm -hmm. her soul. And that's a perfect example of somebody who does not fit the Hollywood stereotype. Right. Well, this fellow Frank Ridley has a question. He says, SAG's yes. answer to multiple submissions is no. In New York City, I had a handshake with a few people and we all got along great. Any take on this one gatekeeper problem peculiar to L.A.? That's peculiar. Oh, wait, when many agents submit you? I I think that's what he means. Can you, see, can LA, you, be, we don't can have you have a New York? See, I, I worked in New York up until 22 years ago. I don't, 
No, you're not allowed to do multiple submissions. True. Now, your agent and your manager can submit you, but you can't have two agents submitting you. Gotcha. In LA, you can't have that. Like, Matthew, you don't have another agent. Um, I think that's... That you know of. That you that I know of, yeah. right. Um, but there's... I think in New York, you have that problem, but I think they have to clear you. That They have to call you and say, can I submit you on the project? Right. I right. think. You know, it's been a very long time, so if I'm wrong, I apologize. What about uh, Gibby uh, wants to know, do you represent clients that don't live in L.A. but are willing yes. to fly in for auditions and bookings? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Many. Um, I don't, there's not, there are not going to be in-person auditions this year. So especially. Self-tape is a really important skill to be working on right now. Self-taping. Oh, my God. Absolutely. I am. Um, to make a very long story short, my social distance friend is, and she's an actress, and she's had two auditions during this roundabout. So the first audition, and I'm I'm the choreographer, the writer, that you know I'm do, I have to be the queen of everything now because right. she's stuck inside. The first one, she got an offer to do, and she turned it down because many many reasons. And the second one was the same quality of tape. But the casting director said, oh, we love her work, but she has to retape herself. Oh, my goodness. So I said, you know, friend, I don't want to say who it is. Go get it done professionally now because I'm as good as it's going to get. I'm not a professional self-taper. Right. Self-taping is an art. Play with it, especially during this time. Read sides, self-tape, put yourself on tape. Do it all different ways. They do want these up. See how I'm up close. They don't want to yeah. see like me acting and you see everything here. Right. They want the tight shots. They want to see. Um, just have a good time with it. Yeah, self taping is so important. Do you I'm going to have, gonna have uh, self tapes. I see. Oh. Marcy Phillips, uh, casting director at ABC yes. in New York, is going to come on as a guest in a couple of That's weeks good. and talk Wonderful. about. Yes. Yeah, she's going to talk about self taping and and. Uh, and the perspective from the other side of the table in the room. Yeah, I'm not the one but, to give you that perspective. Yeah, but that is, but but you do think that even when this is over, that is going to be the wave of the future. Matthew, how many self? What is your fifty fifty? You're about fifty fifty with self. -tapes. I'm about fifty fifty for self tapes, and some of them are for shows that are here in town. Right. Um, but they, I, I mean, some of them are considered in New York. Right. That's always, and you've booked from yeah. those self tapes. Um, you know what? Right now it's all self taping. I do think eventually, you know, there's, there's, I'm not even seeing, I shouldn't say this, but I'll say it. I'm not even meeting people from now until the end of the year. I said, it's not right for me to do that to the clients I have. Um, there's so little work I have to, it's wrong. I just feel it's wrong. Um, I won't drop anybody during this time. Uh, Matthew, we, so just know any phone call, you're good. <laughs> um, huh. No, I just think it's like, oh, come on. We're human beings first. Um, but uh, I think eventually, yes, we will, especially for producer meetings and uh, chemistry tests too. Right. I that. Yeah, I do believe that. But you, because but you think we're always be better more, in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sandra wants to know if you're going to be doing a showcase once quarantine is over. But you oh, don't actually oh, do. Absolutely. You'll be going to them. You don't actually have them, though, right? Do you have. No, you don't have. No, no. Yeah. There's, um, actually, there's one that. Jeremy Luke puts up and you pay to be in it and they get about 25 agents every time he has it. And every huh. time I've gone, I've, I've wanted to sign, I've either sign someone. I will absolutely do that when the time is right. I have bowed out of many. Uh, and I think there were three or four and I won't do any this summer. Um, I'm just, I, I don't feel it's time yet. I will. eventually. Right. Yeah. But, but yes. Right. Great way and good agents go to these. Good, good agents. 
I sit on panels with wonderful people at some midsize Harry Gold's company, um, Buckwald. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, nice, good, good companies. So yes, absolutely. Okay. Sitting uh, at home after the pandemic, you guys have to be on the ground running. Right. Julie, uh, who's uh, a student of mine, uh, says that, that I am a comedic actress. Do you value Do you value any training programs over others? Stand up comedy is that important to list as a skill? Absolutely. Very hard to get into that world. Um, are, um, I won't ask any questions because I don't know what the person looks like. Comedy is very hard. Comedy is the hardest thing in the world to do from to my perspective. So if you can do comedy, um, just keep doing what you're doing. Now there's great, there's UCB, there's what's the other one? The Groundlings. Right. They're all the Acme comedy group. I think they're mm -hmm. all good. I think they're all good. Oh, I'm um, also yeah. second. Do they have Second City here? Yep. Yeah. One of my clients who's on that series work in progress, she's a Second City alumni. Uh one one of the I mean my my two cents on the on the sketch comedy uh mm -hmm. route though is that I I really caution people against uh, I, I say to people all the time, I say, you taking acting classes? And they say, yeah, I'm, at, I'm taking classes at UCB and, and at no. Ground Lake. And I say, those are, those are not acting classes. No, those are sketch comedy. Those are sketch comedy. That's like and learning going, how to handle right. text is right. really important. Right. Um, right, right, right. I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's because like they don't you want you to play with the script when you're, I mean, if they tell you they want you to, great. Uh, but going in for NCIS, uh, you better know the words. You better know the words and you better be very grounded and natural. And they do not yeah. teach you that at UCB or the Groundlings. <laughs> right. Um, let's see if there's any other uh, questions here. Uh, I have a lot of questions. Yes, uh, Mr. Hawken. Uh, dude. No, actually, we've we've covered. Oh, um, what about what? What do you think? Talk about actors who are creating their own material now, a web series, uh, you know, a Great. YouTube web series, and and if if somebody came to you and said, "I had a," they they didn't have uh, any credits that they could show you, but they had a web series that was on YouTube that was ten episodes and it had uh, mm -hmm. fifty thousand followers. Mm -hmm. You would take that would mean if, something if they're good. Yeah. Yes, you know, adult, if I like you, like you had me at hello. Um, right. Anything else is like layers of the cake. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, they're so easy to create content now. It's so so easy. Um, you know, I find in life the easier things get to be, the harder they actually become. Um, we get caught up in our lives. I, I really have to say these past few months, I've learned so much about, um, I'm not gonna get philosophical, but there's so much time. The time fillers that even my Facebooking, what a time, I, nothing is accomplished during that time. So if you have all this time on your hands, do some brilliant things, do some amazing things. Right. Yes, right. I, I, anything that is, is Making you better, I believe in. What's the best way for actors to find out about uh, showcases to get themselves in front of agents and to, no, to figure out which ones that, are... That's a good question. Um, because I get invited to them. Um, you can Google um, showcases in LA. I know that Jeremy Luke one, if you type his name in, um, it's a very very well respected showcase wow. um he has them every couple months um sometimes it's based on who you're studying with um you know there's so many i don't go to because i know the the quality isn't going to be what i'm looking for so right. I'm, um, yeah there's so many of them but you want to go to good ones because you want also, when you sign up for these showcases, you want to know 
who's going to be attending the showcases. You don't need everyone's parents there. You show right. You're showcasing your work. Right. Um, what about... Um, Oh, I had a question and now I've I've lost it. Oh, what about student films? Absolutely. Absolutely, guys. You know, I remember when I was in high school and I didn't get into the high school play. You would have thought that I didn't get the star in the the, the I don't know whatever movie was popular, the Goonies, whatever it was. Right. Do everything. Do everything. Do everything. Yeah. Say yes. Particularly no, here in LA, because Matthew, we you should not be doing student films. No, I and I don't. We're talking about the new, you know, the when you if you're trying to build your reel, yeah, absolutely. And particularly here in LA, where we have, uh, where we have schools like oh, Chapman, Loyola, where I Chapman, see, UCLA, you know, USC, where they're where they are turning out amazing work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and you can get some great stuff for your reel from some of these places. A lot of my um, people under 18, because I have a, I do represent young people. I say to them, if you do one every weekend, I've seen kids start at zero. They can barely walk and talk. And also, you never want to be the first job you have on a set is on the set of um, This Is Us. And you don't even know what hit your mark is. So these yes. students film, they t you're helping them. I don't, sometimes you get paid, sometimes you don't, but you're really getting a great education. And also I believe in this, people don't disagree. If you first come into town, do some extra work, see what it feels like to be on a set. Very yeah. important. Yeah. What's a typical I, day like? What do you do? How do they treat the people? Because yeah. I would not want my first day of my career being the owner of my company. Right. I would have failed. I had to move up, you know, started as a receptionist, assistant, agent, ran the department, blah, blah, blah. Then I owned my company. It was it was the latter. Not I remember. Um, I don't know if you guys remember Andrew Shu from Melrose Place. Oh, his yeah. second job. Still a very good friend of mine. His second job was a series regular in Melrose Place. And I, he said, Jackie, I'm glad I did a couple extra jobs because I really didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've done, I don't know how many guest stars and co-stars and grew up on movie sets. And I was talking to my younger brother, Tony, the, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he had just, uh, I mean, a, a couple of months ago before all of this pandemic started. And he had just come from doing one day on something. Right. And there is no job harder than one day on a show. Oh yeah. Because there's a hundred people there working yep. and there's only one thing that can go wrong today. And it's you. <laughs> right. You don't know the cast. Know. They're not interested in getting to know you. No. No, no, not no. for one day. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. The one so day ones you, are very hard. You know. Um and you know those it, are the hardest to book also. Yeah, and it's something I tell my fill in, Yeah, you have to just fill in. Have you done co-stars in New York? Uh, I, I did, yeah, I did co-stars in New York. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of co-stars until I worked my way up to, uh, to you know, to guest stars. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell a story frequently about my, uh, my first television job after coming back to acting was an episode of um, Law & Order in the teaser, you know, the bum bum mm. moment uh, b before that. And uh, my call time was about two o'clock in the afternoon. I shot, I was done by 4.30 and I'm walking out of the studio. Paul Servino and Chris Noth tortured me. Oh, wow. A torture. And then, uh, yeah, Chris Noth just tortured me. And I'm walking out of the studio and somebody taps me on the shoulder. The second AD tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, uh, before you leave, did, did you want to meet the director? <laughs> and I was done shooting. You know, and, and I try to explain to my students, that's how fast it goes. Yeah. You know, you show yes. up, you're in hair and makeup, camera blocking, shoot out the door. Yes. Thank you very much. They Goodbye. want to get in and out of there. They're not interested in creating art at that point. No. They're and they don't want to know in. you. Yeah. <laughs> I know on sitcoms, the, the longer the sitcoms on, like I think on, uh, what was the one that was on uh, Big Bang Theory, they were down yep. to a three-day week. 
They could shoot. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. It, it was like second nature to them. Yeah. So, and oh, by the way, be- Matthew, I don't think they ever shot that episode of Mom. The one that I had, the one that when I got home from the audition, they shut down Los Angeles. Yeah. It was, it was March 12th. I went in and read. I remember. I remember. And that afternoon, you told me I was on hold. And the next day, they said the city shut down. Yeah. I said, I don't yeah. think they ever shot that because I think I watched the last episode and it was not, that was, character was not in it. Hmm. Anybody else have any more? This is so fun. We could just chat this on is great. This is a ball. Um, well, we've been on for an hour. I think that's a good show. It is um, a good show. Good uh, show. Now, is this. Do, do people watch this again? Yeah, it's uh, this was live. It's as soon as we're done, it is uploaded to my channel, and it will be there for all time for people to look at and get information. So uh, wow. you've been you've been very helpful. I didn't give any um, secrets out, did I? No, no. Well, you don't want to give the secret away. The secret. What is? Do you no, guys really want to know the secret? Anybody want to know the secret of being Tell successful? Tell them the secret. Yeah. People who, everyone needs to write this down because it's true. People who handle rejection the best get the furthest. That's all it is. That's it. Yep. And, and just being good at acting. You know, uh, I think there are too many people who are out there looking for some secret other than uh, being no present and being good at what you do and yeah. persevering. Yeah. But in this, the re- I remember when I told you that I didn't get into the school play. Well, it took me three weeks of therapy to, I'm kidding. Um, it traumatized me. It really did traumatize me. And I said, I will never do this again. I will never allow my life to be dictated by what I look like, what I sound like, what I act like. Blah, blah, blah. That was it. So if that happened that quickly for me, I truly was not meant to be a performer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackie, you know, thank you so much. To too, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I will talk to you soon. Yes. And um, and this was great. Yay. You were going to sign gonna off. Leave. I'm going to hit the leave button. Ciao. All right. For the rest of your day. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, next week, if you come back, uh, same time next week, we're going to have Bo Baker, who has been a sound mixer in the industry for, uh, oh, gosh, uh, more years than he wants me to reveal, I'm sure. Worked on Blade Runner, a lot of other movies. Uh, I'll be putting out information about that. And he will be, I'm sure, we probably won't speak as long as this, but he will be giving insight as to uh, technical things that actors and performers should know about being on camera and being on mic. Um, So until next week, thanks for joining us.